I think they lost the core of the game, to be honest, Paul. They, he's just... Tommy Rodoni has transcended generations. He he played in the 70s. Yeah, he, uh, he was basically the the poster boy for the 70s year of football that was played. He he then began to you know moved into the 80s. He he coached in the 90s, coached New South Wales, he coached Western Suburbs back when when they were dead set broke. And he, he later invented himself as a a, 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 a very uh, unusual media commentator. He, he saw the world his way. And he spoke about it in uh, the terms he understood. And, uh, yeah, I think he's one of those people, he, he was so true to himself that uh, for a period there, he, he was so out of style, he became in style again. Well, this is it. You know, in polite society, they would all pretend that they don't know people like Tommy Radonikus, but in the real world, the people who watch your show and this show, they all know a version of a Tommy in their life. And that, in yeah. many ways, is what helps connect him to fans connect him to the sport that rough and tumble stuff that we've heard about so much and probably every good story we can't tell on television but was was it an act a performance was it his wind-up toy or was it his way of winning football games uh paul let me tell you something about tommy donigas he was authentic and he was unapologetic about who he was he knew who he was he believed who he was uh, and all you needed to be to be a friend of Tommy Rodonigas is to be a genuine person. Uh, that's all he cared for. I also love the number of stories that are about the brotherhood of blokes, that he seemed to love being the leader of men and love being one of the boys at the same time. Um, that is a very unique thing that great leaders have. Some have it in the military, some might have it in business, very few have it in politics. But the type of bloke that Tommy Rodonigas was is that it, it seemed like... Oh, look, I'd never met him, so I can only say seemed, is that, that it was just all in on, on a brotherhood. Yeah, it was. And people were drawn to him. But the one thing about Tommy, Tommy was always the, the dominant figure in a room, in a, in a conversation, because he was so engaging and charismatic. But he was also the guy that if there was somebody on the fringes... He'd say, what's up with you, mate? And he'd pull you into the circle. He wanted you to be included. He wanted you to be part of that as well. He never, he never liked people being out on the fringe of things. So although he was the, the, the alpha male in many ways in the middle of the room that, that people were drawn to, he was also the guy pulling everybody else into the conversation. And I think that's why he had that ability to be one of the guys but also the leader of the guys because he, he cared about everybody. He had this, he had this natural... Uh, protection mechanism in him where he wanted to look after the people in his group and that's what he was about with his teammates that he was the leader and you know, I spoke to Bob Fulton today and Bob Fulton said the one thing about Tommy he said he was come on not go on and George Paponis who also played with him he said if you're ever in the trenches he said Tommy's the first bloke you want to look beside, uh, look beside you and see standing there because Tommy was the guy that was always always had your back and uh, it's a quality, it's a, uh, in many ways, sadly, it's an old-fashioned quality these days. It's, it's frowned upon in some uh, circles these days to, to be that kind of man, but uh, he's the man that a lot of men wanted to be. Give me the one great Tommy Radonica story. It's late enough at night. Everyone's an adult who's watching. If there's a sook who wants to complain, piss off to the ABC. Tell me a good Tommy story. OK, I'll tell you the story. So, OK, well, he's playing reserve grade one day. Tommy's got into fight promotion. They've got a fight. He's, fight. he's promoting Jeff Malcolm, world title contender at the time. Johnny Lewis is training. They had an exhibition down in Griffith. They had to fly into Wagga to put the exhibition on. So they said to Tommy, mate, we must get there. We've got no time. There's going to be a van waiting for you after the game. So they got straight after the game. Tommy walked off into the dressing room, grabbed his bag, straight in the van, still caked in mud. On the way to the airport... He yells out, stop, the driver has to hit the brakes. He looks around, what's going on? Tommy jumped out of the van, straight into a bottle shop, comes back with a carton of cans, sits back, kicks the boots off, starts having a beer. They get to Bankstown Airport. Paul Ferrari, one of the great fighters of Australia at the time, from Melbourne, so he had no idea who Tommy was, but he's from, he was from Griffith, so he's from the Riverina area. They wanted him there on the exhibition night. So they get him in there. They get to the airport. Paul Ferrari's there wait. one of the great Australian fighters from Melbourne. No idea who Tommy is. Tommy gets out caked in mud. Paul Ferrari thinks, what's going on here? They get on this plane, little four-seater. There's Johnny Lewis, Jeff Malcolm, Paul Ferrari, Tommy Radonis caked in mud. Tommy starts sinking the cans. Paul Ferrari's looking at him thinking, who is this bloke? I've got no idea what's going on here. The little bloke up the front flying the plane in the little four-seater, he's wondering what's going on. Tommy lights a cigarette. 
<laughs> and he starts smoking on the plane. He starts checking the panels. Is anybody smoking back there? <laughs> Tommy hid the cigarette under his arm. No, nah, mate, no one's smoking here. Now, this is the 80s, remember, Paul. So what happens? The side of the plane shag pole carpet. Oh, Tommy's no. got the cigarette up against the shag pole carpet. What else can happen? The plane catches fire. <laughs> so the, the plane's on fire. So what happens there? Johnny Lewis thinks we're going to go down. He's a bad flyer at the best of time. He grabs a can, he shakes it. Tommy sees him shaking a can. What are you doing? He says, there's a fire. He says, don't waste the can. Tommy pats the fire out. Poor Ferrari's filthy. He's thinking, what's going on? This guy's about to burn down the plane we're flying in. So they, fly, they land in Bathurst because that's the, as many hours as this. What they now learn is a rookie pilot. That's as far as you can fly. The new pilot, <laughs> the new pilot looks at them and says, I can't take you guys. He sees Tommy, I can't take you guys. They have to sl- throw more money. Tommy, you'll be right, mate, you'll be right. So they get this rookie pilot to then fly them all the way down to Wagga. On the way down to Wagga, Tommy gets up, by the stage he's, he's 10, 12 cans into the trip. <laughs> he's on a four-seater, there's no toilet. So he thinks, all right. He gets an empty beer can and he's trying, <laughs> to, he's trying to adjust himself. And as he's adjusting himself, and he's played footy, he's a bit sweaty, and this is the, the, the late night television part of it. He's trying to sort of aim into the can and he doesn't quite get his aim right and the little offshoot just shoots all over Paul Ferrari. Paul <laughs> Ferrari, he jumps to his feet. Jeff Malcolm jumps up between. They're trying to stop Paul Ferrari from bashing him. Tommy's upset. Well, what, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? By the time, by the time they get the Wagga, oh. the guy who's supposed to be fight, Tommy, uh, Jeff Malcolm's supposed to be sparring with, is, he's out enough that he's gone. The promoter's filthy. He said, right... We've got no fight. Tommy goes, mate, I'll get in and spar him. So Tommy, there's not a can left in the carton. He gets into the ring. Johnny's filthy with him. Paul Ferrari's filthy with him. Jeff Malcolm's filthy with him. Tommy's blind. He's got no idea anybody's filthy with him. He's getting in after playing a game of footy, seeking a two, two dozen cartons, uh, cans, gets into the ring. He's, <laughs> Jeff Malcolm says, he's, Johnny's blind. What am I going to do? I can't. can't. Johnny said, mate, I'm sick of him. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, rip him up the guts. So he gets out there. uh, Jeff Malcolm hits him in the belly. Tommy sort of gets a bit queasy, looks around, looks over. Johnny Johnny says, do it again. Jeff Malcolm goes, boom, rips him up the guts. Tommy steps back. This big arc of foam just shoots out of his mouth. All the beer. Lands in the middle of the ring. Oh, he then apparently stuck around with the the blokes who helped clean it up. Paul Kent's a very good storyteller. (laughs) There'll be plenty more great stories being told about Tony Rodonikus, and I told you, you'd like the story. And if you want to complain, off you go. The ABC's that way.